Well, it's the breaking political story this hour. Mbali Ntuli has resigned from the Democratic Alliance. In 2020, the KZN politician lost the DA leadership race to John Steenhuisen. Since then, the MPL has changed portfolio roles in the party. Well, previously, Ntuli claimed there was a cult-like behavior in the DA, and now she's exiting for good. And Ntuli is live with us now to discuss why. Mbali, thank you so much for joining us. Are you fed up? Are you heading towards greener pastures, if you like, or do you just need a break? Morning, Annika, and thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm absolutely fine with all the work that I've done at the DA, and I'm very proud of it. But I do think that it's time for me to use my energies and use really the kind of ideas that I have to take a different direction and to be in a place where maybe I can have a lot more space to do that. Um, and that being said, I'm not joining any other political party. I think that part of the reason I'm leaving is because I find the way the political parties in our country organize themselves to be very rigid and to be archaic in the sense of what we need to go forward. And I really want to go off and answer the questions about how ordinary South Africans, how communities, how people who are already doing a lot of good work in the country can have more access to being able to have some real power in this country. And I need to do that by taking a formal break from active politics um, and just to have that objectivity. And I really just want to get back on the ground at the moment. Mbali, uh, Lindy Mazibuko, uh, Pumzile Fandan, uh, Fandan yourself, uh, expressing that need to find a space that they feel serves South Africans better than any of the political parties that we currently have at the moment uh, and looking towards more sort of community work and, and going out to, uh, you know, structures and, and communities who really need to get the kind of um, help uh, and, uh, and leadership uh, that's just they're not getting um, because they may be in rural areas or whatever. But there does seem to be this issue, and I, I don't like asking it about black women when they leave the DA automatically because it, it seems like a stereotype. But is there a problem with having being a black woman in the DA? Well, I certainly couldn't speak for all black women in the DA, and I think that sure. Pumzile and Lindy were gone off to do the kind of work that they'd said that they would do. Um, I think that there just comes a point in any organization, whether it's political or not, where for your own personal growth and your own trajectory, you want to be able to stretch your wings. And as I say, I think that I have a lot of privilege and a lot of access and opportunities that I've gained from being in the position that I'm in. Um, and there's some hindrances from being in a political party where you can't always do that. And I find that if I would stay, it would be disingenuous because it would be almost like staying just because, well, you know, there's a salary and that's something that people do. Um, and I think we should all strive to challenge ourselves and particularly people who have privilege and uh, opportunities in this country should be doing as much as they can to uplift other people. So I think it just becomes a, a sense of a personal journey. Certainly that is what uh, happened for me. And I mean, I'm not going to be lost to politics. I think politics is in my blood, but certainly I think that there are other avenues. I mean, there's so many civil society organizations faith-based organizations, community leaders that are doing amazing work who don't have the kind of um, platforms to really be able to get that to be out there. So I want to go and start an organization that looks at trying to help those people and I need to just concretize exactly how I plan to do that. But I have no doubt that it's going to be the next way that people organize themselves politically in South Africa and civilly. And I think that's what we need because none of the political parties, and I think we can all feed us as ordinary South Africans, are particularly working to really better anything. And I think you just get sick of being in the same kind of place. I mean, I've been in meetings where it's been myself and maybe a few officials who have been the only ones awake. Um, and so I think we need a shakeup. I think we need to do things in different ways. Um, and I don't always find that I have the space to uh, have those diversity of views or to have um, that always being something that I can do in a political party at the moment. So that's why I'm leaving. I hear you. I mean, it also sounds like that you're at a career and political crossroads. You do say in your resignation letter, though, you refer to gossip. What kind of gossip are you speaking about? Sorry, I haven't Well, I mean, it. I think it's no secret. I'm... <laughs> Um, well, I think it's no secret. I'm very forthright and I'm very direct about the things that I say. Um, and I'm not the kind of person who just complains. And when I saw problems in the DA, I said what I thought. 
Um, I said what I thought were the issues and what needed to be rectified. And I also then put up my hand to try and lead that process. And that's going to make you the villain of some people's stories. And that's okay by me. But I mean, sometimes that kind of thing can also be incredibly difficult and take a mental toll on people, myself included, but anyone else who might be in a political organization, because some people do behave in a way where they would prefer to uh, sort of exchange gossip rather than tackling issues head on. So that's why I said I, I leave with a great sense of compassion for my colleagues and I've asked them to just protect each other and to stand up for one another because that kind of stuff is very detrimental for an organization, any organization, not just the DA. Is there bullying in the DA that's taking place? I'm sure there's some bullying at ENCA. I think that all organizations are a microcosm of <laughs> society in the way that people behave. All right, that's a, a diplomatic way of answering a tricky question. Um, I hear you. Well done. Um, let me ask you this: What was John? <laughs> what was John Stearnhazen's response to your resignation letter? Well, I'm an ordinary member of the provincial legislature, so the people that I resigned to formally are my line managers directly, which would be my provincial leader Francois Rogers and my chief whip Zakele Mwango. And what was their response? And have you had any reach out from the top leadership? They were both very gracious. I've worked with them for a number of years. And so there's great camaraderie um, amongst us. Um, and I haven't heard from the top leadership. Um, so maybe I will. I don't know. Do you think if they begged you to come back, would you say yes? No. <laughs> You seem resolute about that, okay? This, you've given this a lot of thought. Uh, just last question. Uh, you know, when you're reaching a big crossroads like this and you make a big decision like this, uh, how are you feeling about it today? Are you feeling liberated? Are you feeling anxious? It's a big day. Um, I feel quite emotional. I mean, it's been 15 years. It's been a big formative part of my life. Um, I leave a lot of colleagues that I have become very good friends with. Um, and I think, you know, as much as I'm proud of the work, I'm also really proud of the relationships that I've also found, formed with other political parties, particularly the women in the KZN legislature who've always treated me like a daughter, but have also really afforded me the respect of a colleague. Um, and it's probably difficult to leave those kinds of relationships the most, but I plan on seeing them um, in any case. But it is a big day. I'm obviously excited. Um, but it is emotional as well, and I think that it's good to also sit and be still in those kinds of emotions. So, who knows? Well, in Bali, I know that there are a lot of uh, women and men, I'm sure Taps will join me in saying they really admire uh, smart women like yourself, and uh, we wish you the best of luck in the civil society space. You'll be great. Thank you so much, and I have great admiration for the work that you do and the trade and the media profession and thank you also on behalf of South Africans for all the work that you continue to do and the stories that you bring to light. I mean, it's always made my job a lot easier. Um, and so I think you guys should always be proud of yourselves too. We'll meet again. Thank you so much for joining us.